Good evening. I do not attempt to adjust your radio. There is nothing wrong. We have taken control as to bring you this special show. Hey everybody, I got some questions on how I made my planets in System 32, and so I figured I would make an extremely boring, very long, but hopefully comprehensive and complete tutorial on how I made these bad boys in my game. Alright folks, I've got an empty scene here in Blender. I'm going to press Shift A and create an empty arrows game object or Blender object because we're going to need it in a little bit. Now I'm going to press Shift A, go to Mesh, make a plane. Go into edit mode, press S, Y, 2, hit enter. Nice. Press Control R to make a loop cut right down the center here and then right click to accept the default position. Awesome. Press A, right click subdivide, right click, subdivide, right click, subdivide, right click, subdivide, right click, subdivide. Press tab to leave edit mode, right click the plane, select shade smooth. Come over to the modifiers tab, which is this little wrench here, add a modifier, and select simple deform. Select the axis as Z, use the eyedropper to select this empty, Grab the empty and press RX90. Go back to the plane and change this to type bend. Now add another simple deform modifier, set it to bend, select this object again, this empty object, leave it as X, and now we can change this top angle to be 180 and this bottom angle to be 360. That folds our plane into a perfect sphere and you can see the slight seam along the edge here. You can get rid of that by merging the vertices in edit mode. From here, we will add some cool materials to the planet and make it look sweet. But now you ask me, why do not you just use a sphere? Why do you take this plane and do this thing to it to make it into a sphere? And it's because I don't know a better way to, to unwrap a sphere and have it fit perfectly seamless into a rectangle. But if you can find a way, you let me know. And if it's faster, I'll use it. So put that shit in the comments. Okay, so now before we UV unwrap this, I just want to show you that it is still in fact just a plane and the modifiers are what make are what is making it into a sphere. Now do not apply the modifiers before you unwrap it because then you'll have some serious problems. You want to press U and unwrap this go into your UV editing tab and you'll see that it unwraps to a perfect rectangle. Now select this entire rectangle, press RX90 and recenter it here on the UV layout square. Get yourself a planet texture. I get some of mine from solarsystemscope.com Really all they are are seamless textures that you can wrap around a sphere and then you can change how they look dramatically later on using uh, procedural shaders. Bring your planet texture in here and you can see that we have our UV map lying on top of this texture. It's perfectly sized in the X. Oh, no, it's not. Um, if it's not perfectly sized, then come up to UV Constrain to Image Bounds. That's going to ensure that your map doesn't extend beyond the image. And then we will select it all with A, grab it, and move it all the way to the right. Make sure that that's constrained. It is. Center it as best you can here. And then S, Y, pull it up. And now you've got it perfectly on the image. Cool beans. Now that that's unwrapped, you can apply the modifiers and we will go into our shading tab to get this bad boy looking real sexy. Okay, so now I'm in the shading tab of my file here. I'm going to change the rendering engine to cycles and I'm going to create a new material and call it planet or planet 001 because I already created one called planet. First thing I'm going to do, 
put my mouse over here and make sure use nodes is checked off. Shift A, search for an image texture. Press enter. Awesome. We'll set it in. Will you click this little icon here and drag in a planet texture? Perfecto. Now I'm going to add a color ramp and I'm going to move the color from the texture into the factor on the ramp. I'm going to add a noise texture next and bring the color from the color ramp into the vector of the noise texture. Finally, I will add a bump map. Take the color from the noise and put it into the height of the bump map. Drag the normal from the bump map into the normal of the principled BSDF shader. From here, we'll grab the color from the noise texture and put it into the roughness and we'll grab the color from the color ramp and put it into the base color. We've got ourselves here a black and white moon. Now we can modify lots about this planet by moving some of these sliders around. So I like to first of all invert things so that the shinier stuff appears as having a lower height coming off the sphere which is more realistic. Things like water and stuff are going to be shinier than the rough mountainous terrain. I like the distance to be pretty much maxed out. You can change the scale of your noise to however you like it. I find that high scales usually look better when these objects get really large in Unity. And then we will move our color sliders around and find that we can really change the sort of uh, threshold between the different types of terrain. Adding in another slider and changing its color here. Let's us do some pretty cool stuff and make some pretty cool planets. If we change our black to a bluish color, now we've got some water. We can make some terrain with green, maybe not so bright. And then clouds or snow in white. So really just playing around with the sliders allows you to create interesting looking stuff. All right, so once you have a planet that you are happy with, it looks to your taste, looks interesting and looks dynamic, you wanna go back into the modeling tab and add some lighting so that it's evenly lit from every side or lit in the way that you want it to be seen in the game engine. If you're going to be rotating the planet, then it's important to have even lighting all around the object. If it's just going to be stationary, then you can uh, position the lights the way you want it to be seen and bake it out that way. Once you have the lighting set appropriately, um, and you can use the material preview for this as well as the rendered view by holding Z and changing between those, then come back over to your rendering tab over here. Come down to performance and set the uh, tile sizes to be 4096 by 4096. Or if you want to bake out a larger texture and you know what you're doing, then you can make it larger. But I find that using um, tile sizes equivalent to the X and Y dimensions of your image speed up the baking process. We'll come back to our shading tab. We'll come down here. We'll press Shift A search for an image texture. We're going to actually create a new image texture. We will call this planet underscore normal. Okay. Grab the planet, click the texture, come over to bake and under bake type, select normal and then hit bake. And we will want to repeat this same process for the diffuse map. Basically, the normal map is going to communicate height map or bumpiness information to the game engine when it's rendering its lighting. And it's going to make it appear as though the geometry of the mesh is much more 
bumpy and rough than it really is. And so you save on performance and you get some nice looking stuff. But you also need to uh, indicate to the game engine what color should be on each point of the mesh. And you do that with a diffuse map. And so we will create another image here called Planet Diffuse. Make sure that it is selected. Make sure your object is selected. And then come back over to the Rendering tab and hit under Bake Options. Uh -oh. Bake. Bake type. Now you can do diffuse or you can do combined. And if you're finding that you're having problems with baking times, you can change the direct and indirect lighting influences here and find a combination that your GPU doesn't shit its pants over. So here I am in Unity. I have saved my blend file, the planet file, directly into the assets folder of this Unity project and I've brought in uh, two of the planet textures that I baked out um, earlier. I'll drag in my planet here, right click it, unpack prefab so that I can delete these lights. I do not need the empty and the lights in the camera. All I need is the plane. We can add a sun to the scene using light. Let's do directional light. Now we'll come down here in our project panel and create a new material. We'll call this planet for its diffuse map. We'll use albedo and for its normal, we will use normal. And then we will drag the planet material onto our planet and voila, we have a planet in unity. Cool. We'll come out of 2D here and we can see that it looks gorgeous. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the video. If you liked the video, then please put that thumbs up button. And if you hated it, then please put that thumbs down button. You know, and then hit the subscribe. Blah, 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 blah.